Yo, what's up? It's your boy KSI. I beat Logan Paul, and this is that story. I got started on YouTube around 2010, 11. Uh, I started doing gaming videos. I was playing FIFA, Call of Duty. So the whole boxing thing started from Joe Weller, actually. Uh, he was the guy who uh, called me out on my bluff. I told him I'll fight the winner of him and his friend. He beat his friend and then he came at me. I told him I wasn't really on it and uh, he made videos calling me a pussy, this, that. So we had a press conference, it got heated. Yeah, me and Joe Weller had a fight and I beat him. So I called out. Uh, the Paul brothers, either Jake or Logan, any of the Pauls. At first, they tried to get Greg Paul involved. Greg Paul is their dad, but yeah, I ain't gonna fight any old man, so. Logan was the only guy properly down, so me and him went at it. Also with Logan Paul, I respect what he's done on the YouTube platform. Put out a lot of good videos. You know, he works hard, but uh, what I don't respect is him as a person. No right man would ever record someone who has died and put on the internet and show it to all his millions of fans. I mean, talk about having yes men around you. Like, there's at no point did he think maybe this is too much or maybe this is ridiculous. He was just thinking, this is going to get views. This is going to get attention. I thought it was absolutely disgusting. So, you know, at the time when I called him out, um, I was definitely doing him a favor because, you know, the whole suicide forest thing was happening and him tasing a dead rat as well, you know, he, he just had a lot of bad press and I think he definitely wanted to try and take attention away from that. So, yeah, I essentially, you know, saved his career by calling him out. We got the contract sorted with me and Logan. Uh, we had a few back and forth. Uh, it was quite mental. Manchester Arena was the place we were fighting. Sold out and uh, we went at it. And after six rounds, it was a draw. I didn't think it was a draw, if I'm being honest. I thought I might have just scraped it, but you know, I definitely warranted a rematch for sure. Like, it was a close fight. He did well for someone who only boxed for a couple of months. Yeah, that's why it was beautiful that the, the rematch came the next year. Lead up to this one, you know, we were still somewhat interacting with each other, but it was always just like public. Like, I'd never message him privately. Uh, I think he tried messaging me privately, but uh, I changed my number. He had my old number, so. Yeah, that was, that was funny. I, don't, I have no idea what he sent me. But he started DMing me on Instagram instead. Yeah, I don't know, he was just saying some stupid, stupid stuff. So with the press conference, I didn't want to just do the exact same thing I did last year and just clown him. And I knew he would expect that. So I wanted to be a lot more serious this time and that I wasn't going to accept a draw. He was the complete opposite uh, to how he was last year. Loud, he was all over the place, he was bouncing around. He wasn't serious at all. Yeah, there's a huge juxtaposition between me and him for sure. I think the only time I got nervous, it was the day of the fight. You know, I was trying to take my mind off things. I was playing Call of Duty, Dragon Ball Legends. You know, I was talking to my girlfriend. Uh, you know, I chilling with the boys that I was training with, trying to do everything to take my mind off the fight. Logan Paul was the favorite. Everyone was rooting for Logan Paul. And yeah, Justin Bieber was just praying to make sure Logan Paul won, went in the dressing room to, uh, you know, pray with, with him again and do this and that. So, yeah, it was crazy. That I, Literally, I, I had that nervous energy all the way till the dressing room just warmed up a bit. I was still nervous and I was just like, oh, this sucks. So I decided like I need to switch something up. So I just took a nap, slept for like 20 minutes because uh, we had a bit of time. And as soon as I woke up, all the nerves just went. I just felt calm and ready and focused. Yeah, that nap helped a lot. <laughs> Yeah, as soon as I entered that ring, I just looked at Logan. <laughs> it was crazy, like the whole time before before the fight, he was staring at me, you know, making jokes, doing this and that. And as soon as I was in the ring with him, he just couldn't look at me. He was looking on the floor, he was looking to the side. He just looked like he didn't want to be there. And yeah, I was just, you know, I was I felt like a stallion, man. I was stamping on the ground. I, I, I was just, bro, I didn't <laughs> look at anywhere else but him. It was crazy. I felt like a killer. <laughs> it was crazy. Yeah, I was ready, man. I was ready. Yeah, round one, I came in and I was just, I did my thing. You know, jab to the body, jab to the body, because I knew his head was always going to do this. I knew his head wasn't going to be there. Um, that was the first time I, you know, tasted 
uh, 10 ounce to the head. And it's actually calm. Like, when he hit me, I was like, oh, this ain't so bad. I was like, I can deal with this. Because, you know, I don't know, he didn't really put his whole weight into his shots because he was just afraid of me uh, coming at him and, you know, countering. So he was quite tentative with his shots. Round two, yeah, he tried to come in with a few shots of his own and then I'll just counter again. And then he would stay on the outside, just, you know, constantly moving, running from me, just running around. He didn't want to get touched. Round three, uh, you know, I started to put the pressure on and, uh, you know, I hit him with a shot that knocked him down. And Reese didn't count as a knockdown. He, he said it was just a slip, <laughs> which, I mean, we all saw the replay and it wasn't a slip, but, uh, yeah, he was uh, <laughs> clinching my legs, which is funny. Yeah, that was uh, pretty much, again, my round. I was just all over him, and he just wasn't on it. So round four, just, yeah, he was struggling to deal with me. And then uh, he got a very good shot on him with the uppercut, which, you know, it didn't drop me, but it definitely stunned me. But I think he got excited that he was able to actually hit me with a big shot to the point where he held my head down and hit me with an illegal shot and then hit me twice uh, when I was going down. Obviously, he's like, oh, I should have got a warning for that, but you don't really need a warning for something so illegal. It's kind of crazy that I was able to just stand up instantly. <laughs> I don't even know how. I was <laughs> going to the ref, oh, I hit me in the back of the head. And that's why I was like wobbling, because if you get hit in the back of the head, your balance just goes, man. The referee was like, you got five minutes to rest. I was thinking, if I take five minutes, that's him resting for five minutes. And, you know, I didn't want to give Logan that much time, so I was just looking, I was counting, I was like, all right, let me just give myself one minute, one minute is calm. In previous fights, uh, that's something like that has happened. They'll just get called off, or we'll just take the DQ. I felt like I didn't want to win like that. I thought that was an injustice. You know, I got back up, dusted myself off, took a minute break, and then we went back at it. Round five, I'd say that was definitely his round. Obviously, I was still a bit phased. Uh, you know, he got more shots off. I was like, I'm gonna take this round off and just take my time, take it easy. Make sure I didn't get hit with another big shot again. Yeah, so six, that's when I was like, right, this is it, I'm good, I'm ready, let's go. And I started going ham again. Yeah, I was just, you know, throwing haymakers, trying to put everything into it. And uh, yeah, he was just, again, running, like, you know, hit and run or hit and run. And I was just constantly trying to gain his grill and just throw big shots. <laughs> Obviously, I was in America. I was in his home country. So I was thinking, like, the judges were probably going to be in his favor. But yeah, so when I first had uh, the first judge and he, and he gave it to Logan, I was like, yeah, brilliant, here we go. Second judge, he gave it to me. I was like, all right. This is, this is big. And then obviously with the third one, when Michael Waffle was just like, from the United, I was like, oh. Everyone was literally, you know, holding, holding the tongue, literally weighing. And when he said kingdom, man went, man went off. I was like, let's go. And the judges pulled through. They did what they were meant to do. Like, you know, they were watching the right fight. <laughs> But yeah, Justin Bieber was just... When he lost, I think uh, at that point, he became an atheist. And uh, obviously, Logan's face at the end. <laughs> oh, man, pure just... Ah, f***. <laughs> Celebrate with my team. Yeah, man. And then uh, we went One Oak. And again, celebrate with everyone. We went nuts. People are saying, if I want to fight Jake Paul, obviously, I'm like, you should go fight uh, Gib who's a friend of mine, uh, everyone wants to see it. And then if, if he beats Gib, then I'll give Jake Paul a chance. And we'll go at it, O2, O2 Arena, big boy things. It's crazy, literally after the fight, my song, Down Like That, has just done absolute numbers, 20 plus million streams on Spotify, you know, millions of streams on Apple Music, doing the rounds, it's all over radio, like it's literally been the most successful song. I've ever done and uh, this year has been incredible for me uh, from releasing an album with my friend Randall going on tour you know training for this fight beating Logan Paul and then putting out a top 10 single yeah it's it's been a crazy year and I'm excited for next year man next year is going to be unreal yeah for this year I think right now I definitely need a, a holiday <laughs>